Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Okay, so CNN just did the segment with, quote, Democrat and Republican kids. I'm not exactly sure what the hell that even means. Democrat and Republican kids isn't even really a thing. You know, when you're seven years old, you don't have fully developed political ideas. But anyways, they did this weird segment with a bunch of kids across different schools, or I think in two different schools, one in a red state and one in a blue state, and they came to quite the interesting conclusion. Now, I'm not exactly sure if this is what they were looking for. I'm not sure if this was the point of the segment. But the conclusion here, folks, pretty much confirms everything we've been saying for years. And that statement's going to make a whole lot of sense in a couple minutes here. But first, before we get into this viral CNN segment, this video is actually brought to you guys by a sponsor. So let's play that clip. This video is brought to you guys by ExpressVPN. You know, every homeowner knows this. Every house has a screwdriver, a hammer, you know, the basic tools. Well, where am I going with this? If every home needs a hammer, then every computer needs a VPN. It's simply a necessary tool. If you want to protect yourself from big data brokers, collecting your personal information, tying it to your IP, and then selling it off to the highest bidder, then you should be using a VPN to mask your internet activities. ExpressVPN helps you do just that by rerouting all of your internet traffic through their secure encrypted servers, effectively hiding your online activity from data brokers and even your ISP. If you want to access geo-restricted websites and content, well then once again, you need a VPN. You simply select the location you want to appear from, and then boom, all of a sudden you're surfing the web from Zimbabwe. Folks, obviously I'm using a VPN. I always have it open. It's a tool that's proved itself quite handy. I've been using ExpressVPN for the better part of four years at this point, and if you guys want to join the VPN club, if you want to get with the times and protect your data, well then boy do I have an offer for you. All you gotta do is click the link down below in the description or go to expressvpn.com slash hivemind and you can get three months free by signing up through my link or if it's more convenient for you, simply scan the QR code that's currently on the screen and boom, it's as easy as that. All of a sudden your computer's equipped with the tools that it needs to exist in these modern times. A huge thank you to ExpressVPN for their continued support of this channel. Now back to the video. Alright folks, so now to the CNN clip. I'm telling you the segment, or at least the way Anderson Cooper is describing some of this stuff, is certainly a little bit weird, but just bear with it, because trust me, what's being presented here is highly relevant to the current political conversation. Overall, the biggest finding, the children in the study were polarized, with what researchers called more extreme responses from the blue state kids than the red state kids. Donald Trump, he did bad things. He's like Hitler. He only wanted to be president so that he can just control everybody. Trump is supporting January 6th now. I remember that January 6th it was a bunch of Republicans believing Trump. I, I feel like they thought Trump was a god. People got arrested. I think one officer died after, mm -hmm. afterwards. That was a big day. The study found that these Democrat-leaning kids were about nine times more likely to express negative emotions about Donald Trump than Republican-leaning kids were about Kamala Harris. Why might that be? Psychologist Ashley Landrum has some ideas. So Donald Trump is a very polarizing figure, and it's very possible that the kids are reacting to their parents reacting to Donald Trump being a very different kind of, of political figure than what we've seen before. So do the red state kids hold as strong of attitudes? Well, not when we're talking about Kamala Harris. In part, that could be because they don't know that much about her. Landrum was also curious about how kids saw their peers in the political divide. So do you think that the kids that live in those two houses would be friends with each other? They can. They it's can. Not, there's no law breaking that. It doesn't matter if you are different by skin color or it doesn't matter if you are different by people, you can still be friends. The study found that Republican-leaning kids were more open to visiting a Democrat-supporting household. The Democrat-leaning kids were about five times more likely to say they would not want to go to a pro-Trump house. Would they be okay with you going over to somebody's house who was really supportive of President Trump? No. No? And why not? Because they know that he's not, he's not, he's not like black people, so he will not, so they will not be happy to see me. Would your family let you go over to somebody's house who's really supportive of Donald Trump? No. No, they wouldn't? <laughs> no. Uh, and why not? Because, like, my mom and dad don't like Donald Trump at all. Not a single bit. 
Would you be okay going over to somebody's house whose family really likes Kamala Harris? I think it'd be fine. It's just about the personality of the people. Would your family be okay if you went over to somebody's house who really liked Donald, Donald Trump? Trump? If I want to be real over here, um, so if I just went over there, there I imagine be a good old argument or a fight. Maybe like a food fight or something. Democrat children are nine times more likely to express extreme negative views about Trump, Trump supporters, and of course display a heightened level of intolerance, as they also say they wouldn't interact with people who have different political views. They wouldn't go over to somebody's house if their parents were Trump supporters. In other words, extreme divisiveness. This CNN segment featuring these children, it offers us a telling glimpse into the stark contrast in political messaging and its impact on the next generation. What's most striking here, and frankly concerning, is the clear difference in how children from these households articulate their political views. The children from Democrat families displayed an almost visceral contempt for Trump. He's evil. He's racist. And one kid even likening the former president to Hitler. I wonder where that came from. Donald Trump is turning this nation into Nazi Germany. Then let me know who I gotta vote for to keep Hitler out the White House. That's it, I'm done. And on the other hand, you have children from Republican households who just simply don't exhibit the same intense hatred towards those on the other side of the political spectrum. It feels almost like a great differentiating factor between left and right is emotional stability and emotional maturity. I mean, one of the kids responded perfectly. He said, well, I don't know, you gotta take it on an individual basis. I'm not just not gonna go to somebody's house because they support another political candidate, which honestly perfectly represents the disparity between the two sides, I'd say. You have one side, that is completely intolerant of opposing views. And then you have the other side that frankly acts like normal, rational, emotionally stable human beings. It's an absolute clear, stark contrast. And the disparity displayed here raises important questions about where hyperpartisanship is truly being fueled in America. The children's responses were raw and unfiltered, a reflection of the environment in which they are raised. You know, unlike adults who might temper their words or spin what they're saying in an effort to make their rhetoric, you know, a little bit more palatable, Children don't lie or misdirect. They just say. And in this instance, they're saying what they've been taught. In this case, the Democrat kids were simply parroting the toxic, extreme rhetoric that they've absorbed at home, while Republican kids, in contrast, seem to hold more of a balanced perspective. You know, to me, it's blatantly obvious. Leftist parents seem so determined in instilling hatred and fear in their children, while the right appears more focused on policy disagreement rather than vilifying people. Leftist rhetoric is all about vilifying, dehumanizing, and demonizing their opponents. You know, what we're with witnessing here in this segment is not just a reflection of political ideologies, but a glaring symptom of how destructive and divisive the political rhetoric has become, particularly on the left. The reality is that vile, hyperbolic language is becoming normalized in Democrat households, where opposing Donald Trump or Republican values isn't just framed as a political disagreement, it's framed as a moral imperative. When children are told that Trump is akin to Hitler, or that anyone who supports him is complicit in evil, it doesn't just set them up to disagree politically, it's sets them up to view the opposition as enemies of decency itself. And this kind of demonization is at the core of the hyper-partisanship that is tearing the country apart. And it's a pattern that cannot be ignored. Ignore this at your own peril. Because what we're seeing here, this unsettling reality, goes far beyond what we're just seeing at home. Democrats are actively trying to brainwash the next generation into becoming little partisan activists, pushing an extreme, one-sided worldview. It's not just happening through family conversations around the dinner table. It's being reinforced through public education and the broader cultural institutions that Democrats have managed to infiltrate and dominate. You know, what's really alarming here is that this leftist indoctrination is starting so much earlier. It's not just at home, it's in the very classrooms that are meant to foster critical thinking and open debate. Democrats for years have expanded their control over public education, largely through their grip on the teachers' unions. These unions, of course, are heavily aligned with the Democrat power structure, and of course, they play a central role in shaping the curriculum, the environment, and even the ideological lens through which these kids are being taught. Rather than focusing on basic education and preparing our children for adult life, a lot of these schools, especially in Democrat states and cities, have become battlegrounds for political indoctrination. And just looking at the cultural trend here, it's impossible to ignore how Democrats are leveraging their power over public schools as a part of a larger project of social and political engineering. They're creating little activist Democrat soldiers. That's what they're doing. And they're doing it, frankly, in the most vile way imaginable. Pitting people against each other. It's a true divide and conquer strategy. You know what you saw here presented by CNN? They presented as just this innocent little segment. 
Ooh, ooh, how interesting. But it goes well beyond that. This represents the future that Democrats envision. One where dissent is not tolerated, where political opposition is viewed as morally evil, and where the next generation is taught to fight for an agenda that they don't even fully understand, but they pursue anyways because they're told it's the righteous path. The simple fact is, the public education system, the media, social media, is being weaponized by the Democrats and their allies to capture the minds of young people. And now, thanks to this sick power grab from the left, we're now at risk of raising a generation that is more divided, more extreme, and less capable of meaningful dialogue than ever before. Wrong conclusion, wrong outlook, but ultimately a great segment. You prove exactly what we've been talking about for years. Anyways, that's pretty much what I got for you guys on this one. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.